What's going on guys, your boy AJB the IMG bringing you guys back another quick video. And today this video will be hopefully very straightforward. It's only gonna be one take, so I'm not gonna do a hundred takes on this video. But before I get started, make sure you guys smash that like button, give me a thumbs up, and also subscribe and hit the bell. Again, hitting that button helps the video with, the, with observability, gets me in the algorithm and it helps the channel grow. So the topic of this video, right? This is the fastest, best electric scooter on the market. And there's gonna be a comparison here. So I'm gonna keep it very straightforward. Uh, most of you that do know or have been following my channel, I have two vehicles. Both of them actually have been down. They haven't both been down at the same exact time for too long, but one of them is getting a turbo kit put on it. It actually just, the motor just blew on that, on the dyno. And I have a Genesis that had some electrical problems for a couple months and also some additional repairs that I've been focusing on. So I hadn't been able to, to drive anything really for the last couple months besides friends letting me use their car, thankfully. So I had to figure out other modes of transportation and the best mode of transportation I could figure out for my situation was getting an electric scooter to get around. And that might be why you've clicked on this video. So there are tons of if you know about the electric scooter market, there's tons, hundreds of thousands of electric scooters, it seems like brands out there on the market from V-Set to Cabo to Segway to Dualtron to High Boy, you name it. Your head will be spinning trying to figure out which scooter is best for you to purchase based on maybe price point, speed, so on and so forth, right? So I wanted to make this quick video. Uh, I know a lot of people that do create these videos, they tend to kind of ride the scooter around, things like that, give you a really in-depth review. I'm not gonna be riding the scooter around today. I'll just tell you which scooter is fast based on my comparative analysis between driving both scooters that I do have because I'm gonna be showing two scooters in this video. And again, each scooter is gonna be best for different parties. I have a preference on which scooter that I prefer based on which scooter I purchased first. But based on your situation, based on how much money you have, based on how far you're going, based on how good the roads are, you may decide to choose a different scooter. So I want to give you or anybody that out there that's deliberating on which scooter to purchase a good review and a good comparative analysis between both. Now, some of the factors that I'm going to share and to share which scooters I'm going to be reviewing today, they will be the Segway GT1, which I think is the best scooter, honestly, on the market. It's going to be hard to beat for a lot of different reasons. And I also have the High Boy S2 that I'm going to be reviewing for you guys today. So there's going to be a couple criteria that I review these scooters on. The first is going to be price point. The second will be speed. The third will be safety, right? The fourth will be ride quality. The fifth will be UI. And then the sixth will be transportability, right? So how easy is it to transport? How easy is it to get around? So without further ado, let's uh, top right into the review in three two, one, and we're back. So here guys, I am here with my scooters. I want to go ahead, we're gonna start, as I said, I have two scooters here. Excuse the clutter, I'm still getting my living room unpacked in my new spot, but we have both my scooters here. We're gonna start with this Segway. So as you can see, I have a Segway GT1 right here, and it is sitting right next to this High Boy S2. So let me back up a little bit so you guys can see both. So a High Boy is a little bit shorter. You know, it's not as thick. It's definitely a little bit smaller, but we'll start with the Segway first, right? Because this is my favorite scooter. I love this scooter. This scooter is amazing. So price point and maybe my experience. So purchased a Segway probably about two, three months ago. Originally got it from Segway. They actually sent me the scooter, came in a giant box, and unfortunately, it was a good experience buying the scooter, but FedEx actually just left the scooter outside. The box was so big, I guess the, the FedEx guy just didn't feel like lifting it, so he left it outside. Somebody took the scooter. So I had to go search for another scooter. Thankfully, Segway's customer service was pretty good. I was able to get a refund, but I had to go and search and find another scooter on the market. And I got one at a decently comparative price. Now, if you go on the website, I think they do have some promotions where you can get this scooter. It's originally MSRP, $3,000. Uh, but when I purchased the scooter, again, with the promotion that was running, it was about $1,500 with taxes included, shipped straight to your door, maybe about $1,600, including everything. So 
got the scooter and came with one charger. I recommend getting two chargers because it actually has two charging ports right here. Let me pull up my light a little bit so you guys can see that. There's two charging ports right here. So you can charge the scooter with, which is actually pretty convenient. It charges twice as fast if you're using both of these different charging ports or if you're using both of them at the same time. So that's why I have two chargers right there. I have tons of chargers because I have two chargers for this scooter and then one for the high boy. So pretty big board as far as like riding the scooter. Overall, my, my first opinion, like looking and actually pulling the scooter out the box, really big scooter. It's a huge scooter. It's really durable. It has really big tires that are super durable. So if you're on the street, right, I'm in the city of Oakland. So, I mean, you can pay your taxes all day and there's still potholes. It seems like nonstop. But with these size tires, I mean, you can, you're keeping up with cars. Like I'm passing Priuses on the freeway. I mean, on the, uh, the street, excuse me. Uh, I'm passing cars easily and I'm not hitting unless the pothole is something so deep that I'm going to fall into it. I don't really have any problems at all, which makes the ride ability extremely smooth. So from a price point, yes, it is pretty high, about $1,500, right? But overall, the, the make of this actual scooter, I would say, is pretty good for the price point. When you're buying a scooter, I don't think you want to be parsimonious when you're, when you're purchasing something, especially that's going to get you around, because if you do fall off of one of these scooters, you know, going however fast it goes, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour, you will hurt yourself. So price point, I give it, I would say for the price point, I'd still give it a nine out of 10. I mean, it's, it's not cheap, but it's definitely for the price point, it's very, very high quality. As you can see, obviously you get a pretty big board to actually rest your feet on. It's not a small board that like, you can see, for example, with the high board, you can see the comparison between both of these boards, right? One of them is literally like a stick figure, and one of these is like you can fit both of your feet very comfortably on this. Now, so that's the price point, I would say, for the Segway, 9 out of 10. Now, speed. This Segway goes, well, first of all, here, let me, let me go ahead and show you guys how it works. So you go ahead to turn it on. You're going to go ahead and click this red button, hold this red button. It has four different modes. So there's gonna be park. You can use this walk button. It's kind of like a little toggle that you can switch. It'll switch down once you pull it down. You can go to eco mode. So there's park. When the scooter is just parked, flick it down. It goes to eco mode. Now eco mode, I think you're going like maybe 20 miles an hour. Sport mode, which you can probably go up to like 28 miles an hour. And then there's race mode. So race mode in this scooter will put you at like 40 to 45 miles an hour. And if you're going downhill, probably even faster. Now, when you actually first, so for speed, I would give this a 10 out of 10, actually. Uh, it's, it's extremely fast. It's, you can pass cars easily on the street. You're not gonna have any problem getting up and going. It actually is a great experience driving this scooter. And if you need to use this for like any type of, either quick transportation, you're doing deliveries, you're just trying to get from point A to point B, this is gonna be a very, very fast scooter and it'll get you there in no time. Now, when you purchase a scooter, if you decide to purchase a scooter, you're gonna notice when you take it out the box that you're only gonna be able to access park, eco, and sport mode. You're not gonna actually be able to access race mode. So to access race mode, you, and I don't know if anybody has said this on a video, but you're gonna to need to download the app and it will help you unlock race mode. You're not gonna be able to access it unless you download the app, you register your scooter, and then it'll give you access and it'll ask you like a couple questions. Hey, do you realize that you are going into race mode? Do you know how fast you're gonna be going? Blah, blah, blah. You click yes, I'm okay if I die, and then you have access to race mode. So again, it's pretty simple, very, very simple. Again, the way that the scooter works is that it just basically on a, a mechanism where you just twist twist it and it'll move forward so it's a twist twist a twist down and it's very very simple brakes are very very good on the scooter um speed so as i said 10 out of 10 brakes are very good you're not flying over the handlebars when you are trying to brake on the scooter it's actually very smooth there's no squeakiness there's nothing weird 
going on. Now, safety, I would say, I think it's a pretty safe scooter. I think it's a safe scooter, first of all, because on a scooter, the tires are the most important features of the scooter. If you have tires like this, for example, that are thick tires like this, you can eat potholes, the rideability is gonna be really smooth, it's gonna be perfect. You're not, it's gonna be a smooth ride, it's gonna be like butter. Versus if you have tires that are like this, that are much skinnier and smaller, you know, if you have flat roads, it'll be a very smooth ride, but if you do not have flat roads and you do have potholes, you are going to be in for a very, very, very terrible surprise. And it's not gonna be a smooth ride. So I would suggest if you're in a city that, or if you have a commute that has very bad roads, I would recommend getting a Segway GT1 because the rideability is gonna be very, very smooth versus this high boy. Now this high boy, I'll get to this in a second, but yes, I would give the safety on this, this scooter easily a, a 10 out of 10 or a nine out of 10. Maybe, yeah, 10 out of 10. We'll go with a 10 out of 10 because I haven't, you know, crossed my fingers falling on this damn scooter yet. And I haven't come into any, you know, situations where I felt like the scooter was unsafe. So we'll give it a 10 out of 10 for that. Next, ride quality, 10 out of 10, as we said, right? Because tires are just excellent on the scooter and I feel like that's one of the most important features on the actual scooter. UI, we just kind of went through that. So user interface kind of actually being able to get around and park the scooter and, you know, maneuver the scooter electrically and figuring out how to go from mode to mode. It's a very good UI. I would give that easily a 10 out of 10 as well. Nothing wrong with that. Screen is nice and big for you to see. And it's relatively easy to uh, manipulate. Transportability though. Now I'm gonna have to give transportability like a, this scooter for example. So the reason why I'm gonna give the transport transportability probably like a seven and a half out of 10 is because the Segway GT1 actually weighs like 105 pounds. So I've gotten a lot of compliments riding the Segway GT1. When, I, when I'm on the road with it, people are always like, man, that's a nice scooter. That's a really big scooter. That's an amazing scooter. Where'd you get that from? How fast does it go? You know, like, so people are always just amazed when they see the scooter and seeing how fast it and smooth it rides. Uh, but as far as, it's, it is a big scooter though, as you can see, it's much longer than the high boy. So I'd probably give it like another foot longer than the actual high boy. And it's heavy. It's not, you know, you need to be like damn near the Hulk to lift this thing up. It's 105 pounds. So if you have an elevator and you're able to kind of get into places relatively easily without having to lift this up any stairs or anything like that, then it'll be pretty easy for you to kind of get around and, be, and, and transport to where you need to from a, point A to point B. But if you need to lift this scooter at any point, you're going to be in for a very terrible surprise. And it's not going to be fun lifting 106 pounds if you need to go from point A to point B or you need to get the scooter into any type spaces. So I, that's why I give it 7.5 out of 10 for the transportability. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we can go and get to the High Boy S2. High Boy S2, it's a $300 scooter, so about $330 on Amazon. Taxes included, they ship it straight to your door. So not a bad price point, pretty cheap. If you're on a budget, I do recommend it. It's a good scooter, it is a good scooter. Just make sure you bring the charger wherever you're going and ideally you have pretty good roads. You have a pretty good flat land, you're not, you know, on any construction zones where you're about to fall into a crevice or anything like that or going over any type of gravel because the tires are not made for that as you can see these tires are you know they're they're not they're they're thick tires but they're not huge tires like the segway that are damn near able to just really take the the impact and the beating of the street so Price, I mean, I'd probably give the price for what it's worth. I'd give the price a nine. The price is pretty good. Now the speed, the speed on this scooter, I think it goes up to about 20, maybe 20 miles an hour. Correct me if I'm wrong. Might be a little bit faster. I think it's about 20 miles an hour, um, but it's not bad. There's like sport mode and there's sport plus mode that you can get to on this scooter. Um, you just have to double click this start button and it'll get you in sport plus mode. Or it'll bring you into sport mode and then it shows the miles per hour 
Um, so the UI on this is is not bad, but it's it's really small, right? It's a you know you're we're talking like a little slim bar for a screen versus this giant screen, which is a huge screen that you can see. So definitely different, uh, but again, that's what you're paying for, right? So uh, as far as the speed goes, as I said, I would give this speed maybe a, a seven out of 10. You know, no, that's probably the highest rating I'd give it because it's not that fast, right? I bought the scooter first, the Segway, and then I bought the High Boy afterwards. And I'm getting rid of the high boy because the Segway, you can't go from going this fast, going 40 to 50 miles an hour to going 20 miles an hour and almost feeling like you're going to kill yourself. So definitely for speed, I would give it like a seven out of 10. Now safety, I'd probably give it like six and a half out of 10. I have to give it a six and a half out of 10 because it's, again, the board is much smaller, so it's not a huge board. I just feel like you're much more prone to falling on this. Also, the brakes on this high boy are extremely sensitive. If you are going on the downhill on this thing and you start pressing on the brakes right here, you will feel like, I don't know why they did it this way, but you will feel like you are about to fly over the handlebars. So you have to be very, very, you know, soft on your touch on those brakes because they're very, very sensitive for how fast the scooter is going. So, Probably six, six and a half out of 10 for the speed. It's not a super fast scooter, but again, if you are just trying to get from point A to point B and you have a relatively flat surface, it's a perfect scooter for you to get there, right? I feel like the Segway could be overkill, right? And it's also only 30 pounds. So we're gonna get to that too uh, in the transportability. So big difference in terms of actual size. So you have to also factor that in. So ride quality, as I said, like six and a half out of 10, because you have those tiny wheels. It's a it's much more smaller baseboard versus the larger Segway baseboard. And um, UI, again, I'd probably give that like a seven out of 10. It's very basic, as you can see, it's nothing special. Gives you what you need, how fast you're going, the battery percentage, and what mode you're in. And then we got transportability, as I said. So I'd give transportability probably a nine out of 10, because this scooter is much easier to transport than the Segway GT1 and it's only 30 pounds. So it's about a third of the weight. It's actually less than a third of the weight of the Segway GT1, which makes it pretty easy to just lift up and down. If you need to go upstairs, it's not too much of a hassle or of a lift and shift to get where you need to go. And yeah, you can also fold it down. You know, it's, it's not too hard to do that. And yeah, it's pretty much it. So I hope this video was helpful. Again, please, in the comments, if you are saying, hey, AGB, IMG, I only have $200 in my savings account. Should I just, should I save up and get the Segway GT1 or should I get the High Boy? I recommend just getting the High Boy, okay? Just get the High Boy, it's fine. But, you know, it's gonna get you where you need to go and you can upgrade at some point to the Segway GT whenever you get the money. But I do not recommend getting the Segway GT and then, you know, also getting a High Boy downgrading or if you've ridden a faster scooter or a faster mode of transportation similar to the scooter, and downgrading to like a high boy, for example. Segway also has cheaper scooters as well, like the Nine Bot that are similar to the high boy uh, in kind of the same specs and, and classifications. So you can also look into those as well, but I had to give my Segway GT1 a good solid review today while I had the high boy still to give it a comparative review. So again, that's enough bloviating today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you do, as I said, give this video a like Give me a thumbs up, hit the bell, subscribe, share this video with your mama, your grandmama, your grandpa, and yeah, I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Deuces.